Hey, launch techers. Yeah. Everything is going a little crazy right now. So as you can see, I am indoors again this week. Um, one would think now that we are living on the road full time, we'd actually move ourselves to where the weather is nicer. But in truth, um, we've actually had really, really good weather here in Middle Tennessee. It's just not happening so much during my Facebook lives. And I really love this part of the country. So here we stay. Hey, it's Tracy from LaunchTechMadeEasy.com. And this week, we're going to talk about websites. It's part of the series I've been doing on the seven tools that you really need to launch online. And this one is a little different than the others I've discussed because a website happens to be something you both do and don't need when you're launching online, especially when you're first starting out. Is that clear as mud? <laughs> Let me explain. Okay, so most of the time when people think of setting up a business online, the very first thing that they think about is that they have to get their website set up, right? I mean, it makes sense. You need some place for your customers to go. Without a website, how are people gonna find you? Because everyone knows that the number one goal of a website is to increase your traffic. But here's the myth that too many people don't understand. Even with a beautiful website that is perfectly optimized for Google, people still are not going to find you if you don't have a rock solid, I really have to know this type of content that your readers are going to love. And I've seen it happen over and over again where people get so excited and they have this big, this you know, on their calendar, it's all marked out that this is the day their website's gonna launch and everything is geared towards this website launch and they launch their site and nothing happens because no one knows the site exists. So let's look at this logically. Content is what drives the internet, right? So people crave information in this day and age. And the best way for you to rise up in the ranks of Google and the other search en engines is for people to share your content with each other. Now, I'm sure you've probably had a friend send you a link to an article where they've said, oh, you've really got to read this, right? And you've probably shared a few links with your friends as well. As a matter of fact, I'd love it if you'd share this one. <laughs> But have you ever gotten a link from someone who said, hey, I really thought you'd love the font on this website. Or I really thought you would like the shade of blue that they used. Can you believe this is hex number 035B46? People don't do that, right? So if you ask most people where they're spending their time, money, and energy, it's on a website or waiting for headshots for their site or waiting for the graphics to be finished for their, for their site. And, but for way too many business owners, the site itself is keeping them from bringing in the money that they need. Now, the truth of the matter is waiting for your site to be finished is just a form of procrastination. And I have a theory about this. For a lot of online businesses, a website is like a tangible thing. It's probably the most tangible thing that you will have to show people about what you have to do, at least for a while. And certainly it does give you authority. And when you go to the holiday parties or you see your family and they ask how that little internet business you have going is doing, well, you can show them the website, right? That gives you some authority. But as you probably realized, it's actually the content that's going to grow your business. And writing and putting out excellent content, whether it's video or blogs, that can be really, really hard. I mean, it takes research and commitment. I mean, it's a lot easier to say that you're just waiting for your site to be finished than it is to focus on creating the content that's truly going to build your list. You know, a couple times a year, I go to networking events, and I tend to run into the same people, you know, as you do at networking events. And it always surprises me how often I hear people say, oh, yeah, well, I'm ready to really get going now because the last six months I've kind of been waiting for my website to get done. Or as soon as my headshots are done, then I'm going to launch my site, and then I'll be ready to go. The truth of the matter is you don't even need a website to get your business started. 
I didn't have one for the first six months that I started working on launchtechmadeeasy.com. What I did have was a landing page, and that landing page offered a freebie, which was my technology roadmap. When people opted into the freebie, it put them on my brand new list on Aweber, and it allowed me to email them weekly content and blog posts. Now, I had a domain and a basic WordPress installation using a default theme, just like whatever the theme was that came with WordPress. At the time, it was probably the 2016 theme. I did have Aweber to collect email addresses, and so it would allow me to uh, email my new subscribers. And I had lead pages. Now, lead pages was actually the way that I was able to take the landing page and set it up as the home page on my site. I, I just did that using the plugin that they have for WordPress. Now, as I said, I used that landing page as my home page for a good six months. Now, that was probably a little bit longer than I should have, but I was transitioning over from a different online business and I didn't have the time to really come up with a new website. I was trying to finish up the loose ends there and, and get the new content going. And in the end, it actually worked just fine for me. I collected email addresses of people who were interested in what I had to say, and I was able to write blogs and send weekly emails. So it, it worked out perfectly. Now, the blog itself was on my new site. It was part of that basic WordPress theme installation was a spot where I could blog. And so when I'd send out my weekly emails, I would send a link in the email to the blog post. That was really the only way someone would find the blog. And that didn't concern me for a couple of reasons. First of all, I knew that people were not likely to stumble across my blog randomly for a brand new site. That takes a lot of time and a lot of, like I said, creating content and, and driving traffic to your site. So I wasn't worried that people wouldn't be able to find my blog because in reality, they wouldn't have found it anyways. And on the flip side, what it did is it sort of put like a, a fake gateway to my content. If people wanted to get content from me and get my blog posts every week, I needed to have their email address. So when they went to my website, all they found was that opt-in page or the landing page with the opt-in form, and they had to give me their email address. When they gave me their email address, then they automatically got my weekly content. So it was a little bit of a scarcity thing. You know, if you want my content, you're gonna have to give me your email address. And I that wasn't really the purpose, but it was a kind of cool side effect. So for the first six months, my content was pretty exclusive to the people who were on my list. Now, the configuration of that WordPress installation with Aweber and lead pages, it sounds really complicated, but the truth of the matter is it took me two hours to set it up. It was super fast. I don't even know if it took me that long, maybe because I customized a few things. I did it all in a hotel room at a conference. Now, it was one of those conferences that I go to, those networking conferences, and I had just been told by someone I consider a huge authority in online marketing that my business at the time that I had, which was teaching kids about money, um, it probably wasn't going to work. And because this was somebody that I very, very much trusted and valued um, his opinion, I really took that to heart. But the reality was I still had five days left of the conference, and I no longer had a business or a product or anything. And so the wheels started turning and what else I could create or what else I had to offer. And someone said, you know, Tracy, you should really teach this beginning technology stuff because a lot of people need to know that. So I found out on a Wednesday, my business idea wasn't gonna work. And by Thursday, I had a new idea. And Friday, I had a new landing page on my website where I could start collecting emails. So by Friday night at the cocktail party, I was able to add, start adding people to my list. Now, if I'd waited to find a designer for a website and to go through the process of building a site first, it would have taken me much, much longer and I would have missed out on a lot of list building. So let me say that just one more time. On Wednesday, I was told I should probably find a new idea for business. On Thursday, Someone gave me the idea for a business, which really made a lot of sense to me. I think it was probably an idea that was in the back of my mind all along. By Friday, I was collecting email addresses with the new landing page. Now, I wanna point this out for two reasons. One, it 
really, really underscores the importance of needing to know how to do your basic tech. And two, it really hits home on the fact that you don't need a big, beautiful website to start a business. And let me clarify here. I teach tech, but I am not techie at all. It's one of the reasons I always say, hey, launch techers. I call you launch techers because I'm pretty sure you don't consider yourself techie either. You know, I know how to set up landing pages and opt-in forms and email sequences, all of the things you need to know to launch. But if you asked me to set up a website, no way. Like, no way. I teach basic tech to people so that you can understand just the basics. So that if the idea strikes you to start a brand new business in the middle of a networking event, or if you are in the middle of a launch and your website crashes, you know that basic technology to pull together a quick, perhaps inelegant solution, but an effective workaround for the different problems that you may encounter or the new ideas you may want to test. I just helped someone this last week who had her website crash an hour before her cart went live. And I was able to troubleshoot with her and figure out a workaround where she didn't even need to use her website for the launch. In the end, the website came back up and everything was fine. But the fact that she knew her basic technology to be able to think through ways to work around her website was invaluable. Okay, so off my soapbox, we'll get back to the topic at hand. One final word about websites. When you're choosing your web provider, do not, do not go with something free or what your best friend uses or what your favorite blogger uses or the best new thing that you just heard about. If you're going to have a serious online business, go with wordpress.org, dot org. I know it totally goes against everything that you know is right and natural in the world, that the .org is the correct solution rather than the .com. But I'm telling you, um, in this case, you don't want to make this mistake. It's WordPress.org. Now, there is a WordPress.com, and it's very easy to fall for the, the marketing around WordPress.com that it's so much easier, and they host your site for you. If you start out with WordPress.com, you are eventually going to move to WordPress.org if you are a serious online marketer. I always tell people, you know, you can switch email service providers, you can switch your landing page company. The one thing you are not gonna wanna switch is your website platform. Just start with WordPress.org. It's not hard. And it turns out that in the end, it's not any more expensive than WordPress.com. That's a huge, huge myth that's out there, misconception. Because in order to make WordPress.com work the way you want it to, you're going to have to just keep adding on features that are going to cost you money. WordPress.org. Okay? It is the industry strategy. <laughs> it is the industry standard, and it's a service that most other big guys in the online marketing world use. Multi-million dollar businesses are built on WordPress.org. It also works with all of the things you're going to need to use down the line, like your payment processors, your course platforms, membership site, landing page services, all different kinds of um, things that you're going to want to add on as your business grows, work with WordPress.org. It will serve you well, I promise. So that's it for this week. Let me know if you have questions about the website right below the video. And if you are ready to get your business off the ground and you are sick of going to your holiday parties and having people say, oh, so what are you up to now? How's that business coming? Have you done anything with it yet? Um, you're going to want to check out my new masterclass. It's called the non Techie Blueprint to Launching Online. And in it, I'm going to go over all of the tech steps you need to get your launch set up online. So we're going to talk about which email service provider you should use, which landing page service is best. Uh, we'll talk about 
Facebook. We'll talk about all, all the different tech pieces that could be holding you back from launching online. So if you're ready to just get this done and to start 2018 off really, really strongly with a great launch and have all of those pieces in place, you're going to want to check out this masterclass. I just put the link below the video. So that's it for this week. We're wrapping up the seven tools next week, the seven tools you need to launch online. If you'd like to check back on any of the other tools that I've mentioned, you can go to the original blog post. The link is right below, and you can check out those tools as well. If you have any questions, you can always find me at Tracy at LunchTechMadeEasy.com. Bye-bye.